Before I start my video guys, I want to give you a big special thank you shout out to both Pizza Cake and Nikki. Both of you hit a one year milestone from hitting the join button on my stream, financially supporting my channel. And I am so thankful for you guys to support my channel and stick with me. And there are a bunch of people closing in on that 12 month mark as well. And I will do a shout out for anyone who hits 12 months because I am honestly just so thankful for you guys to support my channel like this. Thank you so much again and on to the video. Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at S Class Tyler. This is the gold bricks character coming into the next crate. We have seen him a little bit but it is nicer to see in you know full dossier layout. I do also like to just keep things consistent and I like to produce the first look videos as it is. So we're going to look at the character himself visually. He looks actually kind of cool. He looks like one of the coolest free-to-play characters we've had. You can see he's got a unique weapon in his hands, the flashing broken bottle he's wearing. It looks like a shirt with roses on it, and he's got a bag full of money. We have seen this from the actual picture of this character, the art, and there's not much use in the apocalypse, but I guess he's, uh, you know, I, I, I think if it was the zombie apocalypse and I came across a bag with like millions of dollars in it, I'd still like just hold it for a moment, just be like, Wow, this is what it would feel like, I guess. But this is Tyler. You can see his avatar on the left-hand side, what it's going to look like, what his face looks like. We have not had a Tyler in the game before. I don't think he's the comic-related character. I think he's going to be a RTS exclusive, like, original character. But we will look at his stats with 30 veteran rings. He has 4,435 attack, 3,988 defense, and 3,924 HP. So quite well-rounded stats as it stands. He is considered a support character as well. So he could potentially go different ways depending on what sort of team you want to use him on. Now, as we take a look, his rush is called The House Always Wins. I like the name of the rush. 76 AP, deals 650% damage to a line of enemies. Up to two teammates get 50% attack for two turns. This character gets 40 crit for three turns. So, there's a couple of things going on here. The 650 damage to a line of enemies is quite reminiscent of Arav. Arav does 750%. This guy does 650%. Their damage is pretty much the same. So he's obviously going to have a bit of a weaker rush just because the percentage on the rush is reduced. Up to two teammates getting 50% attack for two turns is kind of nice, but that's RNG. It could go to your command and your dot, for instance, if you were running a command and dot Stevens, that's the way it can go. But there is the potential for it to go to a second damage dealer and a 50% boost is obviously very nice. This character getting 40 crit for three turns means it would last for their next two attacks because the turn they actually do this rush would be one of those three turns. I like the fact that this lasts for three turns and not two turns because we have seen it in the past where a self buff has gone for two turns and that means it basically is only lasts for one turn so it's not that great this is okay i guess but it, it mainly is how important crit is for the rest of his kit so we'll have to look forward to that and see how important him hitting crits will be and i can say him hitting crits is going to be quite important okay so here we are on turn two as you can see i've already done my doc stevens command just to get the rushes for turn two for these two characters i'm only going to rush with tyler he has got an upgraded weapon to 40 percent attack he has got some mods his overall attack stat right now is 12.8 thousand damage he is actually pretty buffed out but he definitely can get higher there's no 1535 weapon in the hands of Ivanova. There's no other adjacent character. I like to show off the character just by themselves in the bottom line, just so you can see what they look like. But we're gonna just check out what sort of line damage he can do. This is 650% with that base stat. Now the defense team here isn't the best, obviously, because they're those are more offensive characters. There aren't too many defensive tough characters at the moment, but in the future, obviously this may change. But right now, he's going to do the damage. If you do come up against Priya and Mercers on defense teams, which you can do, he's going to absolutely destroy them. So your attack damage is pretty decent, but like I said, it's mainly going to be against those tough characters where it's going to be useful. There might be some defensive tough characters that come out in the future other than the likes of Princess and Frost. That's pretty much it who can be kind of made defensive for a defense team but as it stands his rush is just pretty decent it's not as good as arabs but it's quite close arabs obviously he can just rush every turn that's the big benefit of him and the way it plays into his specialist skill means that he can rush twice in a turn and that's what arabs power is this guy is not going to be that way but he's still going to have a lot of power once he gets that rush off 
But we'll move on to his active skill now and just check it out. It is recover all and gain bonus HP. Initial cooldown of two, cooldown of two, number of uses, five. This character recovers from all penalties and gains 50% bonus HP. This is actually a pretty decent active skill for an attack team because you can decide when you want to use this. You know, you, you've got infection, you're just about to be taken out that turn. Cleanse it. Get 50% bonus HP, nice little bit on top. He has got pretty good base HP, so even if you don't increase his HP at all, he's going to get 2,000 bonus HP there, which is actually going to be pretty decent. The downside here is he's not going to gain any AP when he does this, and if you do want to use this character on a defense team, he's going to do this even if he is not debuffed. Because it gives 50% bonus HP, he's just going to do it because of that half of it, and the first half is going to do absolutely nothing. So just to show you how it'll work, it's pretty straightforward. You can just do your basic attacks as normal. I'm going to just defend with Ivanova because she has got a stun weapon. And what we'll see now is he could get his rush on the next turn pretty quick. I'm going to do my active just to show you what will happen. I'll get 50% bonus HP. Quite a lot of bonus HP there. Pretty nice. Now, what he should do is do a basic attack and potentially get commanded. But what he's going to do is his active. And this is where the downside is on a defense team. While he does get very tanky doing that, it's not going to be as beneficial. What we'll do is we'll just defend just to show the sequence of how he's going to keep going. He should do his rush now. And because I'm defending, I might be able to tank it. There we go. And then what he'll do is he'll do his active skill again. So that's how the sequence is. It'll be basic attack, active, basic attack, rush then do his active again so in the first five turns he'll do his rush once basic attack twice active twice and that's the big issue with him being on a defense team if you do max out his active however he will be extremely tanky in this situation and you can take advantage of this obviously that base hp can be increased and that bonus hp can be increased likewise so if he's if you boost his HP, let's say, to 8,000, which you can definitely do, that means he's getting a 4,000 boost on that bonus HP on turn 2, making him much more tanky. You can definitely tank him out. If he's on an Aaron team, even better. So there are ways to make him more of a tanky character and just seeing his damage as bonus and just being an annoyance. So there are definitely ways to take advantage of that active. So that active is okay. I think on an attack team, like I said, you can control when it happens, so it isn't a problem. But on a defense team, I mean, like, you can take advantage of it, but it's a sort of mixed bag there. You can get him very, very tanky because of this, but he will obviously lose a turn, and he will not rush as quickly. It just depends how important you think his rush is for a defense team if you were to use him there, or how important the potential of him being tanky would be, which I think could actually be pretty useful on a defense team if you boost that HP a bit. Next up, we'll look at his specialist skill, and it is going to be a returning specialist skill to the gold crate because we do already have a character in here with collateral damage too. That is going to be James, but Tyler's going to have it as well when this character performs a critical attack on an enemy they will deal splash damage a 100 damage attack to up to three adjacent enemies the adjacent enemies do not gain ap from the damage so basically he can do extra damage to surrounding characters when james first came out he was absolutely destructive because he was coming up against six stars i did say in my guide video and i think i said in the first look video that i think james will fall off when it comes to collateral damage when it comes to tankier s class era and we're in that era now you know the, the s class characters are basically as tanky as they're ever going to get we're looking at 10,000 plus defense you know 10,000 plus hp these characters are not going to take much damage from collateral so i kind of see this this as being a bonus when it comes to things like SR and not really being too influential when it comes to actually being just, you know offensive in raids if his rush was a multi-hit rush like James I would maybe think slightly differently but because it's not he's just got a line damage rush it's not going to have any impact on the rush itself it's just going to be the basic attacks which are obviously the weakest damage output every character can put out Okay, so just to show you how it works, you can select the central character. That's the best way to go. You do a basic attack. If it hits a crit, you will do collateral damage. You can see I've done a little bit of damage to the surrounding characters. Now, that can obviously be beneficial. It's going to do a little bit of damage. They do not gain AP, like it said. None of these characters gained AP, and only Lily did. So there is the benefit there. You are going to be just bringing other characters' HP down a little bit. There's no real downside to this, but it will proc things like Bide. So if a Bide character is one of these adjacent characters, they would get a part of their Bide bar filled in that time. You're never going to really proc Bide completely with a basic attack. And like I said, it doesn't work with his rushes because his rush is just a line hit. 
So it's only going to be with these basic attacks. So collateral damage is just kind of nice. It's not amazing, but it'll be a little bit extra. Like I said, SR is where this will shine, especially in the earlier stages. Until you start hitting elite and legendary, this should be taking out almost complete waves because it's going to be doing so much damage on that splash. Now, Tyler does, of course, have an attached weapon. As we saw, it is the Broken Bottle. Tyler's defensive Broken Bottle. It has 30% defense base, a medium bonus to AP win attacking, and when dealing basic attack critical hits, this character gets 75% attack for two turns. Now, the thing here is, the first part of it, the stat, is very questionable. If you want to use him on a defense team, I guess that would be the way to go, is to keep the 30% stat. And maybe they're trying to gear him to being more of a defense team character. You could make him very stat heavy, defense and HP. If he is behind an Aaron, he'd get obviously boosted HP and defense there. And then you'd basically get your attack boosts from this third slot. Now the issue obviously being on a on a defense team would be the fact that he'd be a massive window if he has that third slot there because you just have easy AP gain on him. So there are definitely upsides to having this sort of weapon on him, but there are definitely downsides as well. If you were to use him on an attack team, I would obviously change that defense to attack. A huge bonus to AP when attacking and just keep that third slot. It is actually pretty good. And then when you go for the five star weapon, you'd want to get a 100% crit rate, which you can get on fast characters. And that means that every time you do a basic attack, this third slot would proc, guaranteed. You're also gonna be able to get his collateral damage to proc in that time as well, because it is based on crits. So as long as you hit a, a critical attack, the collateral damage will hit. So it actually seems like a pretty good way to build this character. So I'd upgrade it to something along these lines. Obviously you'd want to get Wayland in your armory and not Earl, but you can see that I've gone for extra attack. I went for huge bonus and didn't get obviously. Critical expert is the most important thing here. I would keep resetting this if you were to get this guy basically to get huge and 35% attack. I did get the 35% attack. I just wasn't going to spend too much time on getting this weapon this way. Critical Expert took quite a few goes. I think it was like 15 or 20 goes, but obviously I have a lot of blow torches on this region. So I managed to get this and I'd say this is going to play into his kit extremely well because like I said, every time he hits a crit with that fourth slot, that third slot is going to proc. Okay, so we're going to show you how it works now. He has a 100% crit chance. That means he's definitely going to hit a collateral and he's going to definitely get that 75% attack boost because that's when the third slot. In the test I showed you before, the little gameplay I showed you before, he had a different weapon equipped just so if he did hit a crit, I wouldn't be showing off that part of it. So you'll see he'll hit a basic attack. He'll definitely hit the collat as he does. He gets a 75% attack boost as you can see. I'll do the active just to control Doc Stevens so he doesn't get... Um, command after he's doing his active we're gonna get the rush and now this turn we've got a 75% attack boost while doing that rush his base attack like I said is pretty high it is up at 11 and a half K now and we're just gonna do the line damage and just see what we can get and it's gonna be much more increased damage that was 12,000 on princess if you remember before I hit Mercer and Priya for around about 8,000 Obviously, they're a little less defensive than princesses in general. This is an offensive leader, however. So it's a mixed bag when it comes to comparing the amount of damage output you're going to do on those particular characters. But you are going to do more damage. It's just as simple as that. You have got 75% extra attack stat. Now, how much is that going to affect his collaterals? We saw before the amount of damage we did on um, Lily. You can see how much health she has like, got removed. We'll do another basic attack. And you can see we did much more, much, much more damage on her basic attack with the collat. So that 75% on the collat collateral damage is obviously going to boost everything. You can see the surrounding damage. I haven't attacked these with anyone else. And that's how much damage he did with the collat onto those two characters. They are six stars, of course, but obviously the collateral damage will be increased. So Tyler overall as a character could be quite fun. I think he's mainly going to be used in SR for myself. I will definitely claim him because my fast character roster is absolutely terrible. And that's where he's going to get the main usage is going to be in SR. He could be useful on attack teams, depends on the setup you're going to run. His collateral is nice. You can see the sort of damage output he can bring, but it's not going to be that massive damage, if I'm honest. Obviously, collateral damage hits cannot crit, so it's just base attack. So it is generally better to try and increase his attack as much as possible to make that collat damage as high as possible if that's where you want to go. 
If you want his target damage to be higher, because you're going to crit more often, if you have that 100% crit, that's when you want to use Crit Multiplier. I think this character would have been massively boosted and a much better character if he had a multi-hit rush, obviously. It would have been cool if he was a line damage multi-hit character. He would have been the first character to ever do that as well. And if it would did, did like 325%. So it was two line hits where they could crit. That would have been actually really, really interesting. But he's not going to bring that to the table. And that's where the, this character could have, could have gone from being kind of average, kind of just okay, to actually being pretty decent. Like, I would say maybe up to Arav levels if he could have crit on his rush as well. Because he would have been hitting those collaterals on top. And the amount of damage output he would have had would have been massively increased. But he just falls short of the mark when it comes to raids. But in SR, like I say, going to be very useful for me and I think a lot of people out there. But that is Tyler. Do tell me what you think about this guy as an S-Class character. Are you going to claim him from the next gold brick crate? That crate should be coming sometime at the end of August. There's no 100% date just yet, but hopefully there's going to be confirmation soon enough. That is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.